Now we'll go to this second method of formal evangelism, which is verbal. That's where you prepare ahead of time and you go your Bible, perhaps uh, with a partner, you go and share the gospel uh, in a formal manner. How do we do it? The verbal method of formal evangelism has the advantage of fitting better into existing situations. What I mean by that is that uh, in, in the case of tracts, you just give out the tracts that you have. Uh, the tract may be costing something that is not uh, current or something that is not, uh, yes, the issue at the moment. But when you go out to discuss verbally, you can uh, tune what you are trying to say to fit the existing situation. For example, at the moment, many people are concerned about the coronavirus, uh, issues of illness, issues to do with death, issues to do with, uh, uh, is there a God? How can God permit this kind of thing? Uh, or, or is it from the devil? What kind of, who is the devil? And so on and so forth. So we can build our, uh, uh, topic fit into the existing situation. Small witnessing best done in pairs. So you go out in twos. This is where you say, okay, today we're going to witness. So you go with your partner. Quite apart from being the way the disciples did it, following the Lord's instructions in Luke 10, 1 to 24, uh, verse 1 says, after these things, the 70 others all sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. It also enables one of the presenters to be praying while the other speaks. Uh, personally, we pray gently. Quietly, uh, or, or most likely in a seminar. I, I did a training program for a group of pastors uh, on this. And uh, then I, I sent to go practice. Uh, these two pastors came back quarreling seriously. And I, I, I was wondering, I said, just so what's the problem? And the, the other pastor said, it's the fault of this other gentleman. Uh, he was praying and, sh and, and, and jumping up and down, shouting, and I couldn't let me speak. You know, I couldn't get a word across because he was disturbing with the prayer. And the other one said, well, we were told to pray. Well, don't down your prayer. Keep it under your breath. Don't be, don't be jumping up and down and uh, don't turn it into a... Uh, a prayer meeting or something. Pray quietly, pray gently, pray under your breath uh, so that the other person can speak without being or distracted. In pairing people up from our personal witnessing, it often helps if one is male and the other is female. A uh, question along these lines of the goal, um, and I said, we'll, we'll get to it. Here it is. Uh, we pair people up. We try to, to pair them male, one male, one female. Uh, they will be able to witness conveniently to anyone, irrespective of gender. So if, if they come across a man, then the man will be the one to speak. If they come across a woman, then the, the lady will be the one to speak. Uh, in some places, people are very sensitive to gender. If a, a man uh, uh, starts speaking to a lady, uh, it could be, can create a problem. Uh, in the country, we, we tell people to stand outside, to share the gospel, standing on the doorway. Don't go into the house of the person that you are, you are trying to witness to 
particularly if he's someone of the sex, because people alleged all sorts of things and created problems just to cause trouble for, for people who have come to present the gospel to them. But if you have a partner of the other gender, then it, it, uh, it removes that problem. Also, it helps to pair people who are less experienced in evangelism with those who are more experienced. Um, so, you know, let one person be more experienced, let the other one be a, a little less experienced so that the learning from the, the person who is more experienced. Uh, I know a pastor, or I had met uh, once at a pastor who told me that uh, immediately he leads somebody to Christ. Uh, one of his methods of follow-up is to take them out on a prison. Uh, and, and he does the witnessing, they watch, and when he has done three times, uh, he tells them to witness while he watches. Uh, that way, the, 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 the pairing you know, can become a training exercise for the less experienced person. This will get to learn how to present gospel. Okay. Finally, it is useful to ensure that at least one member of the pair understands the majority strict language properly. There is little point sending out a pair that cannot communicate effectively with the people. I think a question came up along this line too earlier on. Uh, very important that at least one person should be able to speak the street language properly. So when you meet people, uh, you'll be able to actually share um, and, and not uh, come against a blockade because you couldn't speak the language. Okay then, so how do we actually do it? We have seen the various ways to prepare all the things to do ahead of time and so on. So how do we actually begin the formal discussion? Before going out to formal personal evangelism, the pair should prayerfully choose a theme. theme. Don't just pick a Bible and pray and go out. And then when you get there, you just start opening any verse and then you start talking. No. Know what you want to say at a time. Uh, you know, uh, choose a theme. Uh, they should select at least one scripture along the lines of that theme. So you pick a theme, you pick a scripture that talks about that theme. All right, all this beforehand, before you go. For instance, if they decide to focus on the theme of peace, then they select Luke 2, 8 to 14, or Romans 8, 1, 2. Luke 2, 8 to 14 says, Now there were in the country shepherds now in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloth, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a more heavenly spring God and in glory to God in the highest and on earth, on an earth peace, goodwill towards men. That can be your scripture uh, talking about peace. And the other scripture is uh, Romans 5, 1 and 2. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access to the, by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope, in hope of the glory of God. Right? So that's another scripture talking about peace with God. All right. 
So choose your theme, choose a scripture along that line, and make sure you take your Bible with you. Don't go out to read or take your Bible with you. As much as possible, your Bible should be neat and not have tattered pages. Okay, there are the Bible very much, you perhaps have used it for 20 years, it's very torn and worn, but you, you really have marked that Bible very, very clearly, and that's your own personal Bible. Well, then, that's nice. Use it for your quiet time. Use it for your own Bible study. And if you are going out to witness, get a Bible that is neat. Get one that is not tattered. Get one that is not squeezed on pages. Uh, 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 and uh, the reason is, is that, you know, you don't want to distract people uh, by taking a lot of things that in mind they could be criticizing while they're supposed to be listening to what you're saying. Um, there should be translations which people can easily understand. Again, you can have uh, translation that you prefer to use, for example, some people love King James Version, okay? So that's your version, that's your preferred version. You use it for your quiet time, use it for your prayers, great, use it. But when you, you, when you are going out for witnessing, get a patient, perhaps new King James, that people can more easily understand than the original King James Version, which has ancient English words which perhaps Christians have come to understand from Jews, uh, but which unbelievers are not used to because, you know, uh, they are not Christians, they have not been using this. So when you're going out for evangelism, use translations that people can more easily understand. Uh, and your Bible should be handled carefully. You don't want to be uh, handling your Bible carelessly uh, some people might be sensitive to that, particularly Muslims. Muslims handle their Quran uh, as a sacred, sacred material, so they take special care of it. Uh, if you handle your Bible carelessly uh, in front of a Muslim, he will have a very dim view, or he will think that you have a dim view of the content of the book. Handle it with care give some dignity to it uh, and that them to understand that you keep the rest seriously and that they should also take what is written in it seriously. Um, people involved in formal personal evangelism should be dressed uh, tidily. Uh, obviously, you don't want to be overdressed uh, again, you don't want to dress in a way that people can criticize, uh, uh, not because of anything, but because you don't want to distract from the message that you are trying to send, all right? So you don't want to uh, uh, deviate from, from it because of uh, the way you are dressed. When they get to a house, they should knock politely on the door and if admitted, introduce themselves by name. So don't bang heavily on the door as though there was fire outside or something. Not politely, but loud enough so people can hear as well, you know. And if they tell you to come in, go in, introduce yourself by name. Uh, like I said before, in this country, we encourage people to stand outside unless they're in pairs and they are invited in then you can go in uh, and uh, introduce yourself by name so my name is peter and uh, they should quickly mention the name of the church and start, state that they have presented a message a message from the word of god that is if you don't introduce your church assume you are a jehovah's witness or a mormon because they are the ones who normally go out to, to witness or to share their own message. So if you don't introduce yourself by church or by group, 
they will assume that you are what you are not. Uh, it's important to introduce not a name, but your group or your church. If they are invited to proceed with the message, they should introduce their theme and read the theme passage from the Bible. So that theme that you have selected will come to talk to you today about peace, how to find peace with God. And our scripture is from Romans chapter 5 and so on and so forth. All right. They may request the host to bring out his or her own copy of the Bible. They have a phone, so can follow along. Um, I have found this useful because uh, when you read from your Bible, some people say, oh, that's not the way our own Bible says it. But my Bible say the same thing. Uh, irrespective of translation, apart from maybe the Jehovah's Witness Bible. So uh, let them bring out their own and follow along as you read. After reading the scripture, you should be held open while the discussion goes on the reading so you can make reference to other scriptures in case you need to. Continuing with the example of peace, one could state after reading that Many today lack peace and do not know to find it. It should then be stated that the purpose of the discussion is to help the hearer know how to find personal peace. Other themes that could be selected include the kingdom of God, Matthew 10, 7, the end times, 1 Timothy 4, 1, the second coming of Christ, Acts 11, Victorious John 10, 10. These are just examples or illustrations of themes that can be used. Or life after death, uh, Hebrews 9, 27. These are themes. So determine ahead of time what theme you want to use uh, uh, and uh, follow it. All right. In some churches, a common theme and a common scripture selected for each out. As a matter of fact, this is what Jehovah's Witnesses do. They out, they choose one theme, and no matter who uh, is where, witnessing where, they're all saying the same thing uh, as if we are reading from the same page. So it's, it's useful. Uh, it helps our preparation. This is another book that I have written, uh, Witnessing Starters. Uh, Witnessing Starters has 52 outlines for introducing the gospel message. So that's 52 themes, uh, 52 scriptures uh, with them. Uh, so the thing we, we did 52 is because you can use one for each week. So it's people who go out every week to witness, you have a different theme you can use each, you know, and uh, uh, so it contains the, uh, what do you call it? It contains the theme, it contains the scripture. Then it also contains a brief instruction or how to produce, proceed after the introduction. So you, know, you have the theme, you have the scripture, and one page, a page and a half of how to proceed in a brief introduction or how to go ahead using that particular theme. All right. So presentation of the message. Once the topic has been successfully introduced, the presentation of the message is different from the, that of the informal evangelism that we have already seen. Uh, maybe I should go back a step to this. Um, so in, in the case of a group, let us say in your church, you have an evangelism team. I go out every week to share the gospel every week. Uh, then 
in that case, it will help if uh, the leader of the group, perhaps uh, the Sunday before, maybe you go out on Saturdays or on Thursdays, the Sunday before you go out, after service, you meet together and the leader uh, reads out that message, that passage, uh, you know, the theme, the scripture, and the introduction. It's a very brief thing, so you can read it in maybe five minutes. Uh, and uh, then if people have questions, they ask, and then you go, go home and reread it and reread it and reread it until you are very conversant with it. So you can go out and share without taking the booklet witnessed as we do. So now we are ready to begin to present the message. Once the topic has been successfully introduced, the presentation of the message is not different from that of informal evangelism that we have already seen. As maybe request presentation begin the bad news, right? Of the fact, the consequences of sin and sinfulness, all right? Uh, so this is the outline again, the bad news, the good news, begin and then challenge, okay? The bad news, the good news. The good news begins with the fact that uh, God loves us in spite of our sin and uh, the incarnation, he sent his son uh, who came and died the substitution earth and rose again in resurrection, ascended into heaven in the ascension, sits at the right hand of God interceding for us, is coming again uh, and will judge the world when he comes, all right? Uh, and then the challenge to respond to this uh, with conviction, with repentance, and with accepting forgiveness of your sins and receiving Jesus as Lord and personal Savior. All right. Okay. So it's detailed here. So having presented the, sub the subject, it is now time to go into the bad news. All right. So that's where we begin. We begin with the bad news. That's the good thing about this uh, formal verbal evangelism. You can go step by step systematically, all right? There's no change the subject and all those things we do in, in evangelism. We just follow your theme, okay? Uh, all have sinned, Romans 3, 23, Ezekiel 18, 4. Right? Cannot stop sinning because it's a condition of the heart, Romans 8, 5 to 8. Uh, the consequence of sin is death and hell, Romans 6, 23, Ezekiel 18, 4. Uh, we can serve condemn, uh, the end of sinners. I am personally in this condition of sinfulness. I was also born a sinner. You know, you are also in this situation. You were also born a sinner. Uh, unless you give your life to Jesus. So, therefore, left on their own, human beings are doomed never again to see the glory of God and to go to hell eternally. All right. 